Yeah, hi, my name is Michael Royals and I'm CEO and President of Thrivent Health. We're a new biotech startup. Thrivent's core purpose is to uh, strengthen the underlying bond uh, between the health and welfare of uh, animals and that of humans, actually. That's kind of the overriding um, purpose. And we're doing that through developing a, um, a new form of uh, animal birth control for pub global public health markets. Yeah, well, let's see. So Thrive in Health is a, a startup biotech company, and the technology comes out of uh, the, the lab of uh, Terry Nutt at Colorado State University, and we've uh, unlicensed the intellectual property. And our purpose is to strengthen uh, the connection between human health and animal health, and that's really the core of what we're doing. And the, and the bottom line in terms of animals, what? Yeah, so it turns out that surgery to prevent unwanted animal litters is a luxury of wealthy nations. And 84% of the world does not have access to companion animal veterinarians or that kind of a surgery, so they suffer from animal overpopulation, specifically dog overpopulation. And we're working to develop a tool, an instrument, so that countries, um, organizations, and governments can actually humanely manage those animal populations. Yeah, so it turns out, yeah, so the global estimate um, of the number of dogs that are living, breeding, and dying on the streets is 500 million, 500 million animals. Um, India, it turns out, is the global epicenter of that, um, and along with that comes the huge public health burden with having that many animals on the street. Yeah. What, what, how, how big a problem is that in the U.S.? You know, it's funny, um, the problem doesn't seem to have socioeconomic boundaries. Um, in the U.S., we have mechanisms to sort of sweep those dogs off the street, and of course they end up in animal shelters. And it turns out that about 50% of the dogs that come through the U.S. animal shelters never make it out, so they're actually euthanized. So just because we're a wealthy nation doesn't mean we're immune to the problem. So the product profile for what we're trying to develop is um, our goal is to have this be fit for purpose um, for uh, um, emerging market needs. I'm going to stop there for a second with that alarm going off. So what we're trying to develop is, um, first of all, um, there is no alternative today anywhere in the world for surgery with respect to controlling unwanted animal litters. Um, in most of the world where there, where there are few veterinarians, uh, countries actually resort to um, uh, round up and kill campaigns. Um, so we're trying to develop an alternative to that that actually works with dog biology and um, is able to be, um, uh, become a global standard for care for animal population management. And really what that comes down to is we're developing a product that we want to have be a single use, so a single dose, and that is permanent and works in males and female animals. Those are the three big goals. Uh, Wayne Passell, who is the president and CEO of the Humane Society of the United States, wrote a book last year called The Humane Society. And in it, he talked about a, a, a chemical contraceptive such as what we're trying to develop. And he said that it would be one of the great innovations in the field of animal welfare with worldwide applications and dramatic benefits. So th those are his words, not mine. Um, and that's certainly something that we aspire to become. And what, what stage are you at this point with the development? Yep. So the technology has been in development for about uh, 15 years, actually, uh, on the bench, in the laboratory, and we've actually put it through um, six different species now. Uh, dogs, cats, rats, mice, uh, sheep, and deer. And uh, it is on the cusp of actually going to a formal development cycle. So development in this case means controlled studies uh, that will be compiled into a regulatory dossier for approval with national regulatory agencies like the FDA. Okay. And what, what kind of time frame would that take? You think? Uh, it's about a four-year cycle. Yeah, so from the time that we were beginning the development, the formal development process, until the time that we have regulatory approval in our first country will be about four years. Okay. Yeah. And acknowledgments, I mean, this, this is a tangible thing and you've just won an award. <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, so Thrive in Health was started about a year ago, and uh, when we arrived here in Portland, Maine uh, from Colorado, um, I was completely detached from the business community here, and um, they have a program through Maine Center for Entrepreneurial Development called Top Gun, and uh, Top Gun is a competitive program where they enroll companies that have uh, entrepreneurial um, uh, prospect, I guess is a good word, 
And uh, so after a four month program and successive sort of rounds of pitches, um, we came out on top of that. And so there, I think there were 44 companies in this particular cycle. And uh, yeah, so we won, which was brilliant. Um, and the benefit for us was that um, it connected me with the business community and it was kind of regional validation for our business model and what we're trying to do. Right now, um, our biggest challenge is finding mission aligned investors. Um, that want to see their money affect uh, durable, meaningful change in how the, the world um, manages animal overpopulation. So we're, I'm looking uh, for sources of that, for, of that funding um, f and connecting with that kind of funding is uh, one of my current challenges. Yeah. So are you, are you looking for investors that are, that are kind of concerned about the humanity and also concerned about bottom line of their investment? Yeah, of course. Um, so the double bottom line investors would be ideal. Um, we, of course, need patient capital because of the, the nature of the business that we're in. Drug development takes time and money. Um, but um, we're also looking for um, organizations and individuals that care a lot about what we're doing that are mission aligned. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Let's pick up on that, what, that piece. Um, yeah. If you start off with a statement about d uh, double bottom line. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, you, you want me to just repeat that? Yeah, if you could. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. So, you know, we're really we we're um, looking for investors that care about a double bottom line. You know, we certainly anticipate that this will be a a very profitable profitable product as most pharmaceuticals are that are in the marketplace. But importantly, um, we want them to be uh, to care about what we're doing, to care about the dogs, and care about the the intersection of human health uh, with the animal welfare. And putting all that together. Okay. So, um, are you at the point now where you're, you're, you're raising money? You're looking for investment right now. Yep. Yep. I'm actively looking for um, the first seed round, and collectively, we'll need around ten million dollars to make it the regulatory approval and into our first markets. Okay. Yep. And is that? I mean. We, we Yes, absolutely. Um, we have um, on a secure website, we have um, all of the, the investor documents that they would probably wish to see for um, to, to start, you know, at least start the discussion. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Have, you, have you raised anything at this point? To this point, it's been friends and family and, uh, and founders. And how optimistic I you? should say, let me, let me, let me uh, add, add to that. Um, uh, I have written and, uh, comp and been awarded several grants from the Maine Technology Institute. And so that certainly has um, helped, uh, help our, helped our progress. Well, as I, might, I mentioned earlier, sort of the, the global epicenter of the dog uh, overpopulation problem and therefore the human rabies problem is India. Um, and there are very high net worth families in India, and I'm in discussions with several of them. And this could be ultimately be sort of a legacy investment for these families, where you know having them participate in this could make a profound difference, um, firstly in their own country, and you know further downstream on a much more global basis. Yeah. Okay. You as an entrepreneur, what are you? Are you you're, you're a scientist, you're a business person, you're an entrepreneur, you're a risk Got it. taker. It takes all of that, doesn't it? Yeah, um, this particular um, uh, product, this company, um, in tackling such a large uh, problem globally is straight down the center line of what I'm trained to do and what, I've, um, what I'm prepared to do, yeah. What, do you, what, what attracted you to this as a, as a scientist and a, and, and a person, with you, mm. your, your connection with the animals? Yep, and, yep. Well, let's see, um, my background is in product development. Um, it's, it's in global health, and as a veterinarian, um, and uh, with, uh, um, let's see, collectively all together, <laughs> I sort of lost my train of thought there, that's all right. I was just yeah. saying, asking how you're yeah. just defining yourself, really. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. Um, I, it's, this is just kind of a, a perfect alignment of um, what I've been formally trained to do and what my, um, my business background has trained me in and what my product development background has trained me in. So it's, a, uh, it's an intersection of public health and human health and uh, it's, it's actually a, a thing called One Health. And One Health really derives from interventions that make a difference in both animal health and human health. And so um, I choose to operate in that space. How, how do you feel about the kind of dichotomy or maybe actually contradiction, maybe even hypocrisy, 
between um, millions and millions of Facebook posts of, uh, of cute dogs and stuff, and then the, the, the fact that society is generally not particularly motivated to do something about the, the scale of a problem like this. Yeah. I think part of the, the so first of all, our society, Western societies, I think, do a tremendous amount of, of um, put in a tremendous amount of effort to solving, quote, their local problems. But it's essentially nothing uh, to solve the, a global problem, to solve the problem on a global scale. Um, and part of the reason is it's, uh, it's a much bigger problem than they are individually, or that their individual dollars could, could make a difference towards um, coming up with a solution for honestly. And so what we're trying to do through development of this drug is to develop a tool um, that will lower the barriers for success, honestly. Um, if, we can, if we can substitute a technical team, veterinarians, technicians, drugs, sterile instruments with a single injection that costs about 3% of what it costs to spay and neuter an animal here in the United States, that would, that would be profound. It would go a long way towards sort of enabling countries to solve their problems of dog overpopulation. And I could say also, it's not just about dogs. Uh, this works in multiple mammal species. So it could be used in zoo medicine. It could be used in wildlife control. There are multiple places that it could um, have a pretty profound impact.